Okay guys, in this video, I'm working on my 1965 Mustang. It is Friday morning. It's like 10 o'clock. I don't have a video out for today, so this is it. I'm replacing, uh, I'm fixing the ignition on my Mustang. I kind of go a route that I, you know, wasn't planning on going, but you know, it is what it is. Fact is, I needed a video. This is it. I'm editing it now. Hopefully it'll be out at noon today. So here we go. Then I'm going to work on something else. diagnosing my starting problem on this 65 Mustang Fastback. And if y'all don't know much about, if y'all if y'all are new to the channel, this is my 1965 Mustang Fastback. It's a pretty well, it's a pretty decent car. Those are the original floors in it. It's a pretty decent car that has been sitting a long time. The inspection sticker went out in 1987. And my buddy Junkyard Diggs came down and we uh, got this car running together. And uh, if y'all hadn't seen that video, check it out, Junkyard Diggs. And uh, there's a full, I don't know, it's about an hour long video, maybe 45 minutes of us fooling around with this car, getting it running for the first time in, I don't know how many years, 1987. So uh, I did put electronic ignition on this car and it's been running really well. And all of a sudden it just doesn't want to run anymore. And the weird thing is, is I can put my remote starter on this car and it'll crank up with this. But of course, the second I let go of the trigger, the car does not want to run. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit weirder than that. When I turn on the ignition, I have power to the coil, but nothing happens. I turn off the ignition and I have power going to the coil when I crank it over with the, the remote starter and the dead man and it will fire up but of course the second I let go of the the little uh, remote starter it'll stall because well when you let let go of the starter uh, you have no more power going to the coil <clears throat> so it could be an issue with uh, maybe a, a, a resistor in line with the coil because I believe there's supposed to be a resistor in the system and that dead man just gives it full 12 volt voltage. So I'm gonna start with breaking out my meter and I'm gonna check the voltage with the key on and then I'm gonna check the voltage while cranking it over. So let's get this started because I really would like to take my Mustang for a drive today. All right, let's set this meter up. I'm gonna hook this up to positive. I'm gonna find me a ground here somewhere, someplace nice. That carbitator will work, the base plate. All right, gonna turn on the ignition. On. Ignition is on. What do we have? We have 12 volts here. Well, let's crank this thing over, see what happens. Well, it drops down to about 9.5 volts, which is not good. And of course, it didn't want to fire up. 
y'all heard that it didn't really want to try. Now, the key is off. I have no voltage at all. But when I hit this, <laughs> isn't it funny? Key on, it doesn't want to fire at all. Key off, and the darn thing wants to fire up. Now it's going to make me a liar. So, I've got the power wire coming in, it's like right here, and it has something taped in it, and I'm betting it's going to be a resistor. So I'm going to pull this wire up. I can't get it past the coil, so I'm going to have to move that coil. So I'm going to just check something real quick. I'm going to I'm going to hot wire straight to the coil. Okay. And I'm going to try cranking it up with it straight wired. Just just to do it. See if it'll run. I must, must not be doing something right because uh, it wants to crank, but it won't stay running. Is this? Yeah, this goes straight to the I got it wired straight up to the battery Now all that other running was with key off, but it was hot wired. Makes no sense. I got it hot wired. I'm gonna turn off the ignition and I bet you it's gonna crank right up. Ignition is off. Cranking. Still nothing. Alright, so I'm pretty sure what I've got is a ignition dying. So, this was a brand new unit that I installed maybe a year ago. No, it hadn't even been a year. So, I've checked, I've got voltage going to the coil like I'm supposed to. It's a brand new coil, brand new electronic, aftermarket electronic ignition. That was a hundred and something dollars. Guys, please don't hate me. But I've got a, another distributor that's been just sitting around the shop. Still in the bag. Yes. It's a HEI unit, so this is similar to like, this is going to be like a Chevrolet distributor with a Ford end on it so it'll fit in this block so uh, you know it's been sitting around my shop for years rather than spending another hundred dollars on getting this uh electronic igni ignition fixed on it I i've got this i don't have to spend any money so i'm going to install this on the car and hopefully that's going to solve all my problems because it's just acting so weird i'm glad this thing didn't leave me stranded this thing quit running while sitting in the shop. So I'm thankful I wasn't I'm thankful I wasn't on the road for that. So uh, well I've got a party I gotta go to first. So I'm gonna hop in my suburban here and I'm gonna head next town over and I'm gonna go to meet up with some friends. And when I get back, I'll get to swapping this distributor, so I'll see you guys in a second.
All right, so I've got the distributor in, and I gotta admit, it doesn't complement the engine very well. So, uh, next thing I gotta do is set the timing. So, I'm gonna crank this thing up, check the timing, and uh, hook up the vacuum advance, and then I think I'm gonna go for a ride. So, let's crank this thing up. Ignition on. Please crank up. Wow, fired right up. flashlight and a marker all right 20 30 degrees all right so I marked the 30 degree mark on that and we're gonna get it set somewhere in between top dead center and 30 degrees I'm not sure what factory is but I know Around 30 degrees is good. And I need to tighten up this alternator belt. That thing is uh, no good. In fact, I guess I'll go ahead and do it now before I do this. All right, let's check this again. I like how it fires up better. hooked up. Let me get the breather on. And you got to be careful. Oh, I got to be careful on this one because if the breather is on in the wrong spot, my uh, throttle hangs up. That should be it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too big on this uh, distributor. But I gotta tell you, it runs better than it's ever run with this distributor. So there's there's one good thing about it. All right, let's go for a ride.
like it's got the power. So, so far I don't have any complaints other than it, it just doesn't look great on the front of that engine. It's just so big it kind of covers up the, the breather and you know the intake and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm, I might go back to a uh, points style distributor but for the time being that distributor didn't cost me any money. So it'll work fine on this car. I'm going to gonna enjoy it and if I get on it and if I find a uh, good looking distributor to put on this engine I'll do it so it'll be fine right park this thing in the garage and uh, I don't know I hope this is enough for a video so if it is enough for a video Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. Help a fella out. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all later.